It's like being an environmental scientist. I'm exploring an environment, but it's a very big environment, and it goes through the whole universe. And we encounter very unusual places, and I'm interested in knowing all about them. I want to be first. And Peter Goldreich has been the first to explain many mysteries of our universe. Since the early 1960s, as a PhD student in physics at Cornell University and a postdoc at Cambridge University. But his modus operandi is not the mighty telescopes. I'm not programming a computer. I'm not even writing very much with a pencil. I'm just thinking. I helped uh, rejuvenate an ancient field of application of dynamics to the solar system, in particular to the motions over long times of the planets, their satellites, and also the spins of the planets. An initial triumph, the role of resonances in the solar system. In the time it takes Jupiter to go once around the sun, the asteroid goes exactly twice around the sun. So this is an example of exact resonance. My aim was to try to explain why there were quite a few satellite pairs around um, the two outer, big outer planets, um, Jupiter and Saturn, which were in this form of, of resonance. Goldreich concluded the satellites' interaction with the planets caused them to gain momentum, and as their orbits expanded, they maintained these resonance ratios. This type of resonance was an important feature in the generation of volcanoes on the satellite Io. But there's also the potential of chaos in this type of resonance system. Chaos is a very common type of motion in systems which have embedded in them somewhere in their dynamics a pendulum. In the 1970s, Goldreich proposed that shepherding satellites keep Uranus rings confined to a narrow arc against the disruptions of continual collisions of particles. A year later, this prediction was confirmed when the Voyager passed Saturn and found that it too had a narrow ring, the F-ring, previously unknown. And there, one on each side of it, were two new satellites uh, which were acting as shepherds for this ring. Goldreich also predicted the satellite's motions could be chaotic. Indeed, it was found years later they've deviated from their orbits. A related proposal is that planets forming out of gas and dust in solar systems would interact in similar ways as satellites in planet ring systems, and thus, there could be rapid evolution in the orbits of new planets. That greatly helped explain extrasolar planets when they were discovered. Yeah, that was a very tremendous breakthrough. I found California to be paradise, and I've never changed my mind about that. Many of 68-year-old New York-born Professor Goldreich's breakthroughs were made in his 36 years at the California Institute of Technology in planetary science and astronomy, and then in astrophysics and planetary physics. You have to pick a problem which has some chance of you know, making a breakthrough in it. And then you have to have the idea. I enjoy just sitting there and thinking. I learned a lot from teaching, and I learned about waves in ponds and the way they were damped that led me to the work I did on helioseismology uh, and on the twinkling of radio stars. So I've had quite a few of my best uh, ideas here. The idea of charges being ripped out of a neutron star. Rotating neutron stars, also known as pulsars, and then one day, I realized that the neutron star would have charges on its surface, and the electric field would change discontinuously from inside the neutron star to outside, and it would push these charges away with a tremendous uh, acceleration. And this has become a standard picture of how pulsars function. Most of my work has very little practical influence. These are intellectual advances 
nature presents you with a puzzle. Why is the sun oscillating? At first, Goldreich ignored that puzzle until another scientist made some claims. Goldreich counted them. The reason it was oscillating was because these gases were boiling and it was rattling the pot. And we made an estimate of the magnitude of that rattling. And we said, this is much, much less than the scientists who said the diameter was changing uh, could account for. You really have picked uh, the biggest, uh, deepest thinker in astrophysics uh, these days. Uh, he really has um, tremendous physical intuition, but every few years he's picking up on a new interesting problem and makes a home run. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Goldreich and Hong Kong-born Caltech professor Yuk Jung have been colleagues for some 35 years. He has uh, extremely high skills in human relations and uh, institute matters in matters related to the society. Maybe once a year, I uh, will ask him uh, difficult questions uh, which I uh, have trouble uh, making decisions. Uh, and he will always uh, be able to help me out. The two colleagues share another passion. There's no question that he has extremely uh, fine taste uh, for the good Chinese food. When I first started to do science, I wasn't really sure that I wanted to continue to do that for a career. But after I made a few discoveries, I got a taste for it. Just like a tiger who eats a human. It tasted better and better each time. And each time you have a success, you want more. You never can get enough. He was already uh, well famous uh, by the time he, he finished his uh, thesis project. The net result is that he quickly became uh, a professor. In addition to being a uh, a great scientist is a wise man. There's no uh, sense uh, uh, that he is uh, uh, that he's smarter than other people. And Goldreich claims he was no child prodigy. I was just a reasonably normal boy. I uh, was mostly interested in sports. And then after a while, I was interested in girls. But uh, I wasn't very interested in school. Yeah, this is typical. Sometimes even when we have people... Uh... Peter, nearly 17 years old, met Susan in 1956 at the University of Colorado, where his school teacher parents were attending summer school. We started to play ping pong together, which we still do now. And we also studied Spanish together. They said Tesa. Mm. Was it love at first sight? Well, it was something related to it, at least. It was attraction. We were our first serious boyfriend and girlfriend. I liked him because he was smart, athletic, and he was kind of bossy. And at that time, I was very wimpy. They were married four years later. He fought a lot. I, I helped him by taking away all the mundane tasks of life that uh, do you understand what he does? Not really, but he washes the dishes every night, and he'll, sometimes we make salads together. The couple has two sons. It was very different than any other family because no one could understand what my dad did for a living. He worked all the time. He'd wake up and work. I fell asleep, he'd still be working. And he would be walking in the mountains, and I would be complaining about my feet hurting, and he would be lost in thought solving some problem. But. He, uh, he always takes time with his grandson to try and inspire him to be a better uh, academic student. He also spent a lot of time between thinking uh, about astrophysics, doing sports with our kids when they were growing up. Peter does a wide range of sports, including being a judo black belt. I do sports just like I do science, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's my psychology. I, I get bored if I do the same thing too long. There's some intellectual component. There's enough time in tennis to decide consciously what you're going to do when the ball is coming towards you. 
Since 2003, Goldreich has been a professor at the Princeton Institute of Advanced Study, but he continues to work with Caltech colleagues. One is uh, some understanding of formation of planets and understanding of the structure of our own outer solar system. Another thing we are interested in pursuing is understanding the mechanics of small uh, bodies in the vicinity of the Earth, uh, so-called near-Earth asteroids. Uh, hi, 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 Peter, how are you? Beneath the brains and the brawn is apparently a heart of gold. He wants to solve a lot of mystery that nature has given to us. He also inspires a lot of like young people to you know, want to solve those kind of problems. It's sort of like, you know, my father, my grandfather kind of like figure for me. So yeah, so I want to like I like to talk with him about everything, you know, in, in life and also in science. I don't like to work in things where Many, many people are working. I don't want to do detail, and I want to do it in things that involve physics, and I want there to be a little magic in it. 